Hey guys, I'm Eric Poole, Guns and Ammo, and uh, I am here in Les Bears' uh, man cave, I'd like to call this thing. It is a warehouse of top-notch tier one cars, very low miles, uh, very exquisitely restored in some cases. Some of them are actually all original, and I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek that no one else is going to give you. And uh, right here, to start off with one of these holy grails, the 1969 Boss 429 Mustang. This is one of nine Boss 429s that Les has, and uh, the only one in black, and black is so rare, let me tell you. You can uh, quickly tell. What I love about Boss cars are that they're very uh, discreet. There's not a lot of logos. In fact, just to indicate this is a Boss 429, you get this uh, decal right here on the fender and uh, this unique hood scoop. You can tell this is 69 because up front there's quad headlights on the 1970. They only made these cars two years. On the 1970 year, it goes from a quad headlight to just a two headlight set up up front with this more uh, uh, clean grill with the, the rampant pony over the, the red, white, and blue up front. Uh, this is what the big Boss 429 looks like, and it fills up the whole engine bay. It's a huge big block motor, and right, you can tell right now it's a, it's a Boss 429. It's got these massive heads, the head up there, and of course the Boss 429 logo up there. This one is a, a beautiful grabber orange uh, uh, version of it. We also have new cars in Les Bears collection, including this Shelby GT350. But what's awesome is that he just doesn't collect one car and call it quits. He's got to have one of everything. Not only do we have a GT350, he's also got a GT500, which you'll see later, as well as a Shelby 1000. It has over 1,000 horsepower. And uh, oh man, this black and blue, you're not going to see this on anyone else's GT350, this beautiful metallic uh, pair of stripes running down it. And then of course we have just interesting cars. You can imagine driving down this Fastback uh, Mustang with a 289 on it, nice V8, just a beautiful blue with ivory interior. Uh, awesome car, mint. I mean, you could just imagine, even though it's an automatic, this thing would be smooth to drive on the weekends. Uh, of course, then we go back to some of these new cars. You know, a lot of the early Shelby Mustangs uh, were in Wimbledon white with blue stripes, and this is sort of a modern tribute to that car, and this is a Super Snake. Uh, everybody loves the Super Snakes, and everything about Les Bear is about precision and big horsepower numbers. Uh, and right over here, I'm looking at a 2012 Laguna Seca Boss 302. You know, in 2012, they bought, brought back the Boss 302s, and this Laguna Sec is unique in that uh, it does not have a rear seat. The rear seat delete has been replaced by some support because this was intended for a track. There's even a cool track key, a dedicated track key that recalibrates the computer and gets this thing ready for the track so that you're getting max performance for track day. But then you go back to your normal key for normal settings and you can drive it home, pick up groceries on the way. Uh, what an incredible car, what an incredible ride. But my favorite and possibly the holy grail is the story of the 1968 uh, Shelby GT500 KR. KR stands for King of the Road and it was an interesting piece of history how uh, Shelby managed to uh, secure the trademark for KR and steal it away from uh, Corvette and, and the thunder of that. Uh, of course, you got the 428 Cobra Jet under the hood, but what's most incredible about this is that it only has 3.1 miles. There's an interesting story here where this husband and wife uh, bought this car from a dealership across the street, came home, parked it, and then a week later, unfortunately, the husband died, and this car sat in this garage uh, for all these years, never to move. And then this gentleman came up to Les, offered him the opportunity to purchase this car. With only 3.1 miles, he immediately bought it. And this is perhaps the lowest mileage Shelby GT KR500 in existence. What a beautiful, it's a very just conservative color combination. It's got this nice tan interior. Uh, it's an automatic transmission. But Les tells me that this car won't move from this position after it was just touched up, cleanly restored. The most original KR I've ever, I've ever heard of. Uh, it was parked here and he says it's not ever going to move again. But hey, just because 
we have a lot of Mustangs here doesn't mean that we don't have other cars that have some Mustang uh, thoroughbred horsepower in it. For example, this Boss 302 engine stuck in a Mercury Cougar Eliminator in this beautiful grabber orange with some, some tasteful stripings. I mean, these two are very rare. They may not be as quite collectible as other Boss Mustangs, but they're just as exciting. And the people who know about the Boss history and uh, uh, what went on in the late 60s and early 70s can really appreciate uh, the collectability and the rarity of this car. Here we have an authentic Shelby AC Cobra. This is uh, actually personally signed. If you walk up here on the passenger side, uh, you can actually see Carol Shelby's signature. Uh, Les, Les Bear and Carol had a, a nice uh, friendship over the years. This thing is tastefully done in a, a blue with silver stripes. And wow, the power this thing creates and the noise that the side pipe exhausts. This thing is just a monster. It is so beautiful. Again, as we're looking back, you can kind of see just a few of the Boss 429s in Les Bear's personal collection. What you don't see is a, a Grabber Blue Boss 429 1970 model. But here we have a beautiful 1969 Boss one. One of his favorite red uh, Boss 429s from 1970. And of course, a Grabber Green in 1970, uh, which was actually featured in Guns and Ammo's book of the 1911, called, in an article in 2012, I believe it was, called The Boss, <laughs> kind of suggesting that not only is this the boss, Les Bear is the boss. And for example, we have this beautiful uh, a Grabber Green. He loves Grabber Green. He, of course, couldn't stop at just having a Grabber Green Boss uh, 429. He's got to have a Mach 1. He's got to have a Boss 302. But that's about the only Boss 302 you're going to find in his Mustang collection. But here's an example of his Mach 1. It has an awesome honeycomb uh, tail light panel in the back with this nice tasteful uh, black stripe with the Mach 1 decal. We roll up here. I love these 1970s louvers. You know, uh, it's got that nice hearse four-speed uh, top top loader four-speed shifter up top. This one has the Corbett uh, Ram Air uh, uh, option on it. But that Grabber Green is so beautiful. One way you can quickly tell a Mach 1 from, like, say, other Mustangs of that period is we have these uh, turn signals built into the grill. There's a pair of them right here. You notice there's kind of a uh, force field, a shield that I can't just bring myself to touch these cars because they're all mint, pristine, perfect. One of these, so Les Bear, a little bit of personal history, he owned a long time ago in the 60s a Shelby GT350 Hertz. This is one of those rent erasers and you could basically go and rent a, uh, a Mustang Fastback with a 289 high, po high performance engine out of it, take it to the drag strip, and have fun on the weekends, turn it back in. And, and actually, I heard there was a lot of people who would actually take it home, take it to the garage, unbolt the engine, transplant it to one of their own personal cars, and then uh, put something like a six-cylinder in these things. And of course, Hertz, Hertz just hated that. But uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more Hertz a little bit later on. But man, this is just a beautiful piece. This is one of two Hertz black and gold uh, Shelbys he happens to have. Now. Of course, he's not only just a Mustang guy, he actually owns one uh, Chevrolet, and this is the Chevelle SS454 with a cowl induction hood. It's awesome, you know, that the, the vacuum in here just uh, opens up this cowl up top and sucks some air. I don't really know how super effective it was. But uh, this one, being a, a four-speed also, beautiful, nice tan interior, very clean lines. Love the black stripes on the hood and the rear deck lid. Uh, and then just behind you, we have a newer Shelby GT350. Uh, I mean, again, honoring the Wimbledon white heritage with the blue stripes, this thing just speaks to the Shelby racy her heritage. And uh, this isn't a Shelby GT350 that's, that's meant to be raced with. This thing has been tuned up a little bit to be just that much faster. We're going to go in here real quick. I told you about that Shelby Hertz, and we're going to see some modern Shelby Hertzes. Now, here's three of them. We're going to come back to the KR500 that's right here. This is a 2008 model, but I'll touch that in a second. Here's an example of uh, the 2006 Shelby. Shelby reintroduced uh, a partnership with Hertz again, and in about 2006 to 2009, you were able to rent these cars all over. And uh, Les Bear managed to get three of them for himself. These things uh, have never been rented, uh, you know, but they are just awesome. And even though they have uh, an automatic transmission and and uh, a little less horsepower than, say, other Shelbys of the, of the uh, GT500 that was introduced in 2007. 
he tells me these things are still fast and a lot of fun to drive. Uh, lightweight and very nimble handling. I love this rack. Okay, of course, below here we have a Shelby uh, Extreme. And I got to check to be sure. Yes, this is an S351 supercharged uh, uh, saline. I'm sorry, it's not a Shelby. This is a saline. And I've always kind of liked the hockey stick decals that were down here. Just to let you know who makes the car. Saline has got a lot of unique features, including tail lights, a huge big uh, fish tail in the back, some unique seats, a lot of beautiful aesthetic uh, touches. Up top, this is one of his three Cobra R Mustangs. This is a 95 Cobra R, and these are basically race cars designed for the street. This one in, in white. Cobra R's were always one color for that particular year. They made them in 1993, they made them in 1995, and they made the grand dandy of them all the year 2000. This is the Cobra R race car, perhaps uh, one of the best and ideal Fox body type Mustangs that uh, you know was ever, ever produced. It's got this beautiful chin spoiler up front. It's got these uh, uh, smokestack like air intake on, under the hood. Uh, you know, you got the Bridge Force uh, G-Force TA, uh, I'm sorry, BF Goodrich Bridge Force, eh, BF Goodrich G-Force TA uh, drag radials on there. This thing is just an awesome race car and you'll notice too, just like a lot of race cars, there's no rear seat. We got another two uh, G, uh, Shelby GT Hertz cars. And then right here, this was the first Cobra R in 1993. Beautiful red. You can tell the, uh, the real low production ones, these black rims. Again, uh, no rear seat. You gotta keep weight down, of course. And uh, little things like uh, antenna delete. This thing is stripped down. This is all intended for performance. But what a collectible car. These things are finally being realized for the true collector that they are. Another collector, just to uh, mark the anniversary, of uh, uh, Shelby's KR, the 40th anniversary. This is uh, the 2008 KR 500. <laughs> you see Les there trying to evade me a little bit, but this is a beautiful silver. Now, some people like, dislike the color, but uh, this were only available with these blue stripe options. And when they hit dealers, uh, you know, this was the most powerful Shelby in 2008. And uh, not only does it have some beautiful treatments, uh, but dealers would, would mark them up as much as $125,000 when they were sold. Now the prices of these have come down, but this is definitely a collector one day. Uh, I mean, who knows uh, where the value is going to be in another 10 years. So we're going to move into this room and, uh, oh, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm turning around, there's cars everywhere. There's a beautiful 68 Roadrunner here and it's got a, an awesome, massive crate motor. Uh, underneath the hood. So he is also a Mopar guy. Some of these Mopar guys are going to love it. This hood just lifts us to the top. You know, the hood pins are moved. And uh, you're able to lift that hood straight up and reveal the beautiful power up there. Of course, his uh, granddaughter went to high school. And when she was going to high school for two years, she drove in this beautiful Mustang. And he had this thing built for her, and it is blown. Just look at that supercharger with the two Holly carburetors sitting on top. Yeah, don't let the 289 badge deceive you in the Krager wheels. This sucker will run. I can't believe what it would have been like to date his granddaughter in high school and uh, uh, her pick you up for prom in one of these things. At least that's what I like to imagine. This is another one of his GT350 Hertz, a black and gold. Again, he had one of these as a kid. And I love this Cobra jet motor here. We have another Mustang. And again, looking at the headlights, this is a 1970 Mach 1, but what really makes it neat is you got a decal. It's got a 428 Cobra Jet under the hood. Back here, we see the Twister Special. And this was, uh, you know, to signify all the tornadoes in Kansas at the time. Uh, all these cars, you notice little details like the Goodyear polyglass tires, everything is correct. Uh, you've got tags hanging off the turn signals and in the correct trunk liner, you know, the spackle spatter type trunk liner versus uh, the plaid version. All the little details are just amazing here. This is another. Now this is the Shelby that basically, in my opinion, started all the Shelbys, the GT350 in the beautiful Wind Wimbledon white with the blue metallic stripes. This thing looks so good with the 289 Hypo engine in it. Tuned by Shelby, there's an awesome data plate here that indicates and certifies its uh, authenticity. 
uh, you know, of course you got the fastback. This is just an amazing car. Love them always. I'd talk more about them, but there's just not enough time to cover everything. This is one of my favorite. I, so I drive this every day. This beautiful blue one with the, the white stripes, another 289 high post Shelby GT350. Oh man, just gorgeous, gorgeous. Where do we go here? Oh, we've got another Mach 1 with a 428, super rare in this uh, orange color. Got another uh, Roadrunner here, beep, beep. Look at this, 426 Hemi, just sitting in there, filling all that room. I mean, with that, wow, look at that. Can you just imagine how much power and, and thunder came out? I bet it drank a lot of, gr a lot of gas. Nice air grabber hood with, with the air coming in from two ports on side. I love that part about the Roadrunners and some of these hoods. There was also on other cars, of course, so uh, don't beat me up too bad. This thing's finished with nice red line tires on Magnum 500 wheels. Oh, man. And there's another, there's a Mercury. You know this Mercury, hey, we got a Marty report in the back, which I love. These Marty reports are going to tell you everything you want to know. Uh, he will tell you, you know, they go over and they tell you all the options and all the features. And this just certifies that everything that you see on the car is true and original and correct to this car. Come up front, I just, I just love this. And this also has the, the Hurst shifter up. Man, that, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Now up top we have a uh, 2003, uh, this is an SVT Cobra, this is before Shelby re-entered a partnership with Ford, so the special vehicle team at Ford uh, uh, helped develop this. In 2003, 2004 were the best Cobras that came out of there for this uh, last edition before in 2005 they changed the body style uh, to more or less what we know of it now today. Uh, this thing has been uh, tuned by Roush, Jack Roush of Roush Racing. And uh, he's a personal friend of, of uh, Les Bear. And wow, this sucker moves. But underneath is a little personal pride of mine. My parents, when they got married, they went out and bought a 1982 Mustang GT brand new off the showroom. And this is exactly the configuration that they bought. They got T-tops on there. They got these triax wheels. Uh, and what I love about them is also the tail lights, which are very difficult to replace if they get cracked. You know, these vertical ribs. In fact, my parents even had these same louvers. Black on black interior. It's got, you know, uh, a four speed manual with uh, an overdrive, basically a five speed in there. And I spent so much time growing up in the back seat. I never remember being in a baby seat. Just my dad ended up uh, boring out this five liter motor, uh, you know, 30 over, and this thing was just a monster. He was a police officer in Southern California, he chased down a lot of bad guys in this, in this vehicle. What a beautiful car. Unfortunately, in 1983, they screwed it up by changing the looks. This one was marked as Boss's Back. And uh, you know that was a, a call out to the 1969-1970 Boss Mustangs. This was supposed to be the revival of the Mustang in the Ford family. I love the front end. It's got a unique front fascia to it with quad headlights. I don't believe they did a better uh, black Fox body than this one. It's just gorgeous. As you keep, continue on with me, here we have another beautiful uh, metallic green. This is a Boss 302. However, this is not the Laguna Seca one. This is a little bit more streetable, and you're going to, uh, you know, it still has a track key option, which is neat, but this has a back seat. And this has a, a stereo and air conditioning and, and some of the features that makes it a little bit more of a daily driver. You still got the 1970 style Boss 302 hockey, hockey stick stripe with the stripe that comes down the center. Very, very nice car, and you got the, the fog light delete in it. Uh, man, these things are just so powerful. Uh, I love Les's taste. And again, going back to the Mopars, here's another Hemi Cuda, guys. This is, wow, orange with beautiful white ivory interior. It's got a, uh, a pistol grip shifter. Just kind of goes along with the Les Bear philosophy of uh, you know, gripping something and really taking control of its power. Uh, of course, this one has got a lot of it and it is tough to hang on. If you come around the back real quick, you see, man, I love, just love the stickers. Like here's the instructions to uh, mount and, and take out the, the spare tire and the jack from the rear end. But everything is mint and perfect. You see the tags on these things, they're all valid because Les still takes these out and drives them occasionally. I mean, he's a real car guy. One of my favorite colors, I used to have a, a Grabber Blue Boss 302 and this is actually what I was imagining I was driving if I was behind a, a Grabber Blue Boss 302 because this is the Boss 429. Again, another one of his uh, nine beautiful ones. This one with a white interior, I can't imagine how hard it was to keep that white, those white seats clean. Uh oh, we got another red Hemi Cuda. Man, with a paint to match uh, uh, air induction. 
shaker hood in there. Wow, just, just gorgeous, gorgeous car. This is a 1970 model. My dad was a big Mopar guy, so uh, you know I'm very fond of these cars in my opinion. These are like the perfect wheels. A lot of people change these out for the Magnum 500s, but these, uh, these uh, Mopar late 60s, early 70s wheels were just perfect for this. This one has a nice vinyl top, again, to hide kind of the imperfections that Detroit was known for trying to shape that roof line. And here we are back to a 2013 Shelby GT500 Super Snake. And just look at those deep wheels in there. This has been so amped up. I love it. It's got like dual uh, racing stripes in the leather of the Recaro seats up front. This also has back seats uh, as well. So very, very livable, streetable car. Anything more than this, man, I just, I just imagine it has to live on a track. I mean, wow, I love the peak under there too, man. It's what a big air cleaner. All right, he doesn't have a lot of them, but he's got a Boss 302. Again, uh, this is a Grabber Green, one of his three. He, again, he's got a Boss 40, 429 in Grabber Green. He's got this uh, uh, Mach 1 in Grabber Green, and of course, this beautiful example of a Grabber Green original uh, a Boss 302. The Boss 302 uh, was, was just as fun. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love the black out there. You, you don't get this with the Boss 429. This has a nice blacked out rear uh, uh, tail light section, including the tail light rings itself are all blacked out. It's got a nice black stripe on top of the rear deck lid. You know, some louvers. This has a two-tone uh, black and white interior. Uh, beautiful, beautiful piece. So, of course, Les Bear gets his, uh, you know, passion for cars really because back in the uh, late 70s and 80s, and even into the 90s, he was a championship uh, racer. I mean, we had drag strips, bracket racing, uh, all, type, all types of drag racing and, and stuff of the days. And this is an example of a, a streetable, uh, I forget how many horsepower he told me he's in this thing, but this is a streetable eight second car, he tells me. He can drive us down. He actually sometimes goes downtown and harasses the, the local children and kids and other uh, less modified Mustangs and just impresses the heck out of them at cruise nights with this thing. What a fun, fun car. Uh, you know, it, it's just so unassuming. So again, we have another 2012 Laguna Seca Boss 302. It's kind of got this adjustable lower splitter here. Uh, nice lot red accents, including an accent on the roof. This has the 1969 Boss 302 graphics. The graphics kind of come in into a C shape. Whereas uh, the 2013 Boss 302 has the hockey stick like the 1970 Boss Mustangs had. And wow, look at this sassy grass green uh, 572 Cuda. This is obviously a huge crate motor built for racing, but I'm told it has never raced. What is awesome about it though is when this is complete, Les Bear was inspired and actually built one of his 1911s in Fired by this car and you can see the inspiration. It is just a great example I even think it's funny that after all this beautiful paint work and the flat black non-reflective uh, uh, Black on top of the hood that that continues uh, uh, Down the top of the car. He finishes off with a black vinyl top I'm going to move back here. This is one of his more recent acquisitions and this is a, a 68 Shelby uh, That's a convertible now, of course, we still have a beautiful Cobra Jet motor inside, a 428. This is a GT500KR, all original rims. This thing was actually driven uh, and loved by a couple until, unfortunately, one of them passed, and uh, they were ready to give it up. But you can see this all original car. It's been well-maintained, well-cared for. Mustang Club of America member. Nice, beautiful four-speed. This thing would haul, but was, was, was just a great couple's car. These tail lights, uh, which have been knocked off in several ways, you know, were kind of first seen on T-Birds, and this has got a sequential tail light system on it, so it would blink from the inside if you had the right turn signal, the left turn signal, or the hazards on. They, they started in these square brackets, bing, 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 and it's just a lot of fun to watch them, and, and they've been recreated a bit, and you'll see them in some modern Mustangs these days. <laughs> look, look at the little detail down here. It's got a little bit of a... a uh, remove tie down plates label behind the license plate bracket. I mean, just the fact that everything's been been kept and uh, maintained so beautifully is just incredible. Now, since uh, 2000, uh, 
seven, I believe, uh, they have introduced signature cars at Shelby, and this is one of Shelby's signature cars, uh, a GT500 Super Snake uh, Signature Edition, and wow, this thing is so amazing. I heard this thing rev up and roar later on, and it was deafening to be behind the, uh, the rear end pipes uh, when he started this thing up, but a beautiful contrasting black and blue. Uh, to my knowledge that this isn't really offered to anybody anymore. This is something unique for less uh, But what we all what we all aspire to is is this and this is perhaps the ultimate Mustang uh, This is the Shelby 1000 there is actually more than 1000 horsepower at the wheels at the rear wheels in this car and uh, We've been out fun driving this today. You're going to see some pictures and some video of it because this car, the Shelby, the GT Heritage at Ford, uh, inspires the only thing faster than his cars, and that's going to be his guns. This is the new GT Monolith uh, from Les Barrett's. This one's in 45 ACP, although it's also available in 38 uh, Super, that is. And this is the Monolith. The Monolith has this uh, no-pick rail, uh, full extend, extension of this uh, frame contour. It's not recessed or scalloped in any way. And this is definitely uh, in a kind of commander size, uh, I think they call it Comanche at Les Bear, uh, but it's in the commander size package, beautiful, tasteful grips on it, uh, you know, diamond checkering. And he got his, of course, a 20 LPI front strap checkering. I mean, this pistol is awesome. Some ambidextrous controls and a, a mix of a polish and a matte uh, stainless steel. Again, the only thing faster than Les Bear's cars are his guns.